Hi, everybody. Quint Lear's New Home Sales Com. I'm here with Ryan Taft. Ryan, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Excited to be a part of the program. Yeah, we've, we've been tracking him down. Um, finally, I cornered him. We're, are, we, are we on a boat? Where are we? Yeah, so we are at the Lowe's Coronado Resort on the balcony here. We're actually about 27 minutes from start time of the annual Jeff Shore Sales Leadership Summit, so we're excited. Well, very well attended. Everybody's super excited to be here. The event, and the if you've not been here, this is amazing. Ryan is an extremely talented, I would say gifted speaker, trainer, coach, motivator. Tell me a little bit about yourself. So I, um, I, I love helping people grow and learn. I have a background that almost uh, predestined me to do this. Uh, I say that jokingly. Uh, my father was an actor and a performer, so uh, being in front of a group is uh, not uh, as tough as it might be for some others. But um, my mother was uh, a bit of, a, um, of an alcoholic, so I was always driven by the curiosity of why people do what they do. And then most of my after school days when I was a kid uh, were spent uh, sitting in King Realty in Sherman Oaks, California with my aunt who's a realtor. So when you put those three things together, it makes sense why, uh, why I was called to do this. But, and I think you are, and I, you mentioned something, and I think it's called curiosity. You're, you're, you're a consummate learner. Tell me some of the things that have impacted you to, to you know, I know that you're studying the, the Jeff Shore material, but on a personal level that have impacted you in your career. You know, uh, early on in my career, I was actually on the totally wrong path. I had long dyed black hair and earrings and uh, stretch pants, sorry for the visual, uh, leopard shoes. I was in a rock band and really going down the wrong path. And luckily for me, I was introduced to a mentor who got me on the path of reading great books and listening to great audio content and really hanging out with better people. So one of the things that really impacted me was that first mentor and the first book he ever gave me, which was How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I've been on a reading path ever since. Dale Carnegie, one of the, the masters. Um, you're, you, tomorrow you're speaking on, on two specific, actually today, tell me what you're speaking on. Uh, so I'll be talking uh, briefly about how to take your community story and make your customer the star of that story. In a nutshell, we tend to see people who tell their community story and they make the community the star. And it usually starts out with some frame of, let me tell you about our community and then how close they are to the freeway. And by the way, we have good schools and we're near Home Depot and it's kind of feature benefit. But that tends to make the community the star and uh, the customer the back backdrop. What I'm talking about is how to flip that around to get your customer to be the star of it. And I'm gonna give you a clue. Uh, it means that they're the ones that need to be telling the story, not you. How do we do that? Well, the big, re the big thing you need to do is you have to know your customer ahead of time, meaning you have to know their backstory and actually be able to know them so well that you know what their macro needs are. In other words, the needs that you could apply to any customer. But then once you get that figured out, really figuring out how to go on that emotional journey with that customer of what it is they're hoping to gain. And then the third thing is to provide social proof stories of how other people have been able to achieve that emotional journey. The last piece of the puzzle, if you want your, your customer to be the star, is to have them experience the emotional journey that they're hoping to go on. There's a little more to it, but uh, in a nutshell, that's it. Ryan, you're, you, he's doing fantastic. He's a rising star. You, you've been in a, we're, we're a trainer with a top five builder, and now you're here with, with Shore Consulting. How has that transition you know, from sales to management to now making an impact as a, as a trainer, motivator, coach, how, you, how have you made that transition? What have you liked? What's different? What do you miss? So uh, I'm always, always see myself as a salesperson, never as the uh, consummate expert. I don't ever frame myself that way because I, I always feel I'm constantly learning. So when I look at an audience, I always remind myself that there's more experience staring at me than there is staring at them. So staying humble and realizing it's, it's a conversation, not a lesson, if you will. And there's tips and things like that, but uh, staying humble in the position has always been my attitude to be able to impact the people in the room, the people I'm coaching, whether it's in the field or, or whatever the case may be. But just to remember, it isn't about me. So quick question, you're about to do a big keynote. What do you do mentally to get prepared? Are you amping yourself up? Are you kind of meditating yourself down? What, what is your mindset going into this? 
You know, uh, my mindset going into it is to really see it happening before it happens. I do a lot of visualization on that. I don't get nervous per se anymore. It's more of an excitement level. At this point, we have so many friends that uh, that are fans. It's It makes it a lot easier, to be honest, because, uh, you know, we know a lot of people in the room. We know a lot of people that, uh, that have been in the industry for a while. And the thing that really makes it the easiest is we're speaking from a position of how the customer wants to buy and their mental journey, not so much about sales tactics. And uh, the one thing we definitely stay away from that makes it easy to talk about is that you don't want to be the manipulative, cheesy salesperson. You want to be the person who's collaborating with your customer, not controlling them. So what I do, I just visualize it the way that I want to go. And I realize that at the end of the day, most people, uh, they talk about the number one fear in the world is getting up in front of a group of people. So if, uh, if it goes south for me, I usually have fun with it. I'll make a joke. Uh, it, some sort of uh, Martin Short reference usually pops up. I don't know, you know. <laughs> and and I, I, I know you've had some ups and downs. It's not all been highs. Real quick, what tips would you have for the front line, front line salesperson that's feeling low or feeling discouraged that's watching this video right now? Yeah, so it's a great question because when you're in that position, it's usually after you've gone several weeks without a sale. And we get into our heads quite a bit and the conversation can be brutal, right? It can be, oh my gosh, I forgot how to sell. I must have gotten lucky all these years or uh, what's wrong with me? And the problem with that is your focus is on the wrong person. It's on yourself. And so what I constantly remind people who are in that position is to make sure that their focus goes off of themselves and onto other people because that's really the issue. And people can smell that from a mile away. I, I'll give you an example. I had a, a, a client I was working with and she was five weeks without a sale, just in her head, freaked out. And I said, you know, you got to reframe what your job is. And I, her manager probably looked at me like I was crazy. I said, your job is not to sell homes. And she just, what do you mean? I said, it's not your job. And she kind of gave me one of those kind of like when a puppy hears a weird noise kind of things. And, what do you mean? And I said, your job is to make people better than when they walked in your door. When they leave, they should be better after. Whether they buy a home or not, that's your job. And oh, by the way, you'll probably sell some homes because of it. So when we take our focus off of us and we put it onto other people, all of a sudden we start to, to, to really get in that groove again. So we get off of our commission and get onto the customer's mission. And that's the key. Say that again. Get off of your commission and get onto the customer mission. Okay, so what's your mission? Last question, what's your why? Because you're out here motivating people, but what gets you motivated? When people realize that they can still grow and learn, that there's there's further to go on the journey. My father's 89 years old just two days ago, and when I call him, he's taking a piano class, he's taking a dance tap class, he's, he's taking a singing lesson. And so what really lights my fire is getting people hungry to want to look, grow and learn so that they, they can go and impact other people. Well, I don't know if you're motivated, but I'm, I'm more just... Just being next to you, man. Ryan, man, best in the business. I'm super excited to watch him. I just read the 4-2 formula on the way here. Awesome. Excellent book. Guys, you got my full endorsement. I'm looking forward to seeing you up there. Awesome. Big it. fan. Yeah.